OK, well, the latest figures show that the East Midlands is in the middle of a housing crisis. Thousands of homes need to be built, but finding the land to actually build them on leads to endless planning rows. In the meantime, there are warnings that the lack of available homes is holding back our economy. Here's Radio Derby's political reporter, Wesley Mallin. Britain is in the midst of a housing crisis. Depending on which estimate you take, we need to build between 250 and 500,000 new homes every single year just to meet the demand. Here in the East Midlands, social housing is one of the key pinch points. In fact, across the East Midlands, 116,500 people are on the housing waiting list. 40,000 of those are in overcrowded housing and that figures up 16% on the previous year. The lack of social housing means more and more people are seeking advice from organisations like CAB. We have seen a dramatic increase. Uh, um, people coming in to us who have got housing issues, um, they're on the housing list, they're currently living with family and friends because they're waiting to be rehoused, or they've been put up in bed and breakfast by the council because there's no houses yet available for them, or their emergency situation where they're still waiting to be allocated a house. But it's not as simple as just throwing up a few hundred homes. Many of the sites earmarked for building are greenfield and nobody seems to want a major development on their doorstep. This land on the outskirts of Alfreton has been the subject of many unsuccessful planning applications over the years. But now Amber Valley Borough Council have been pretty much forced to grant outline planning permission for several hundred homes on this site. That's largely because they really don't have a legal basis to refuse. I guess it loses uh, some open space for people to go to. There's very little open space around. It's a shame there's, a lot, there's not a lot of green in Alfreton now, apart from here and the park. They're the two biggest green pieces left. And if this goes, 500 houses? Meanwhile, the over-occupancy surcharge, or what Labour calls the bedroom tax, is pushing up demand for one-bedroom properties. It is going to have a knock-on effect and it's only just beginning to begin now where people are coming in and coming to me and saying we are struggling financially. So I think it is going to get worse. Well, we're joined now by Chris Hobson, who's the East Midlands Chair of the National Housing Federation, which represents housing associations. Chris, how acute is this problem? It's very acute, I'm afraid. In the East Midlands, each year, we have 22,000 new households being produced. Now, last year, we built just over 9,000 new homes, so that's less than 45% of the actual new homes coming forward to meet the new, the new need. Um, and so the result, we've seen some result in that short film, but you also have in some areas people being priced out of, uh, of buying a home, you have rising, um, rising private rented sector, and so it's really putting a real squeeze on people's finances. OK, well, we saw in, in our film there, that site in Amber Valley, but we know that there are nine 97 brownfield sites in that area. The Campaign to Protect Rural England says there's plenty of space out there to build on already. I think so. We need more houses, but we need them in the right places. In my constituency, we've got more houses than anything else. Uh, but there are lots of places, brownfield sites, and I think the government should do a couple of things. Firstly, restore the cut to the grant that was given to build houses, been cut by more than half under this government. The second thing is get rid of this bedroom tax. What on earth is the point of pushing people out onto the housing market when there aren't homes for single people or for uh, elderly couples? Those are the housing uh, needs of the society. We need to build some of those uh, homes and you can only do that by getting the housing grant restored. And what that does for you is help build the economy as well. Construction <laughs> workers, bricklayers, plasterers, yeah. get our economy Okay, well, moving. Julia, your party's in government and they are committed to building tens of thousands of new homes. Where are they all going to go? Where are you going to put them? Well, uh, Graham says it's important where they go. Well, it is important where they go indeed. Uh, what I would say um, is one of, one of the things we've got to find is we've got to find money to actually build the houses in the first place. And, and something which the Liberal Democrats did when they came into the coalition, which the uh, Labour Party had flatly refused to do for the whole term of office, was to free up local councils to have money to put investment, ring-fenced investment, into properties by being able to keep the council rent money and that's what we've done. Councils can now keep the uh, revenue rent which they get from council house rents. They can put it back 
into property and get this thing moving again. And I think that finance well, is are. extremely important. Well, some people it's say your party didn't do enough when it was in mm. power and ca you, you could have done more. Well, it's done twice as much as this government in terms of the actual amount of money putting into new housing. Uh, but I've got to pick Julie up on, on uh, this uh, question about the uh, revenue support grant and all the other bits and pieces. Everybody knows council expenditure has been savaged uh, by the government that Julie's friends in the Lib Democrats support every single night of the week. They are working with the Conservatives to stop councils having the amount of money they need. And if we allow councils to get on and do the job, I'm a great devolver, they will do the job, they know the best places for housing, rather than having edicts from Mr Pickles in Whitehall telling people, in, in essence, they've got to build on the green belt. Chris, you, see, you hear the different opinions mm. here. What do you think about what our politicians have to say? I suppose there's a couple of things there, isn't there? First of all, absolutely, absolutely right to say we need to know where the homes are needed and we need to build them in the right places. We used to have um, have a national um, regional spatial strategy, it was called, and that gave us targets for building across the region. Now, since that's been scrapped, nationally plans for over 270,000 homes have been scrapped by local councils. So councils need to really step up to the mark and make the right decisions. Be supported to know what they need and where they need it. And in terms of, uh, of, of the money and the economy, Absolutely, I agree that, um, that continued grant into building homes. And there's a really strong argument there. We know that if we were to be building the 22,000 homes needed in the East Midlands, then that would, um, that would generate £1.5 billion in the local economy, and it would support over 35,000 jobs. And those jobs would be local. That's, that's the great thing about house building. It all stays local. It's very local supply chains. Can the councils really solve this problem, though? I, th I, cer I certainly think they uh, they have a part to play. Uh, I mean, all I can say coming back... Uh, you know, we hear about all the rows that are going on about it and all the protests there are about plans to build more homes. There was only um, a couple of days ago a story in Bingham about a 1,000 new homes have been approved to be built there and protests there. People don't want them there. Well, I have to say, I mean, coming out of the East Midlands, if you look in Cambridge, for instance, the uh, local go government there are, have got plans to build 500 homes uncontested and local people are very happy. It's um, not always the case, though, is it? It may not always be the case, but I think with the waiting lists as they are, then um, all sorts of low-priced housing is needed. But we need to be building smaller homes now as well in the light of the bedroom tax, don't we? Well, we need to know exactly what homes are needed in, in different areas. So in East Midlands, we have one of the most rapidly ageing populations, and so we need to make sure that homes are developed to appropriate for that. Um, I suppose, um, to come back on the point about people not wanting to build in certain areas of land, I think a lot of people recognise there's a need for more homes, just not at the end of their road. And so what we need to be doing is really showing them this is the impact of not building homes, the, you know, the, the need, the, the rise in waiting lists, um, the drop in services, the closure of pubs, etc. in rural areas. And actually, when you are building new homes, this is what you can bring to a region in terms of jobs, in terms of money, in terms of vibrant, uh, sustainable communities. It's, it's not just people saying uh, nimbyism, uh, not, not in my backyard. Uh, we're now forcing builders to approach councils to develop land that is inappropriate. Uh, it could be on a floodplain, it could be uh, nice green space in people's areas that's very precious to them. There's a stress and pressure now coming on. We should leave this stuff to local councils, duly elected by local people, to fill a particular space and a particular gap in the market. And at the moment what we're having is we're pressing councils because they've abolished the spatial strategies, we're pressing them at national, or uh, the government is pressing them from national level, okay. wholly and appropriately to meet ridiculous targets and that's why people okay, are well, screaming. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Chris Holton, thanks very much indeed for joining us in the studio.